Hello and welcome to a new blog. In the last episode we finally finished our maintenance and set sail to Gibraltar with new crew. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me, we're family. Sing home. So this passage to Gibraltar is only 120 miles, so it's basically um, a day and a night really. Um, so we should arrive sometime tomorrow afternoon. Um, the first meal is one of those ones that I always do. It's a ready-made meal, well I've made before and frozen it. Um, it's a spaghetti bolognese, half meat and half veggie actually. Lots of grated courgette and carrots. It's comfort food, they all love it, and that's the best thing to have maybe on the first day of um, not sailing for a few weeks. But they're, pretty, they're doing pretty okay actually. Matt's feeling a little bit ropey, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Well, we left Del Miramar about two o'clock and uh, now I'm into my second watch. There's quite a lot of traffic up ahead. There's a lot of swell, probably up to two meters at some point. So it's been a bit uncomfortable, but the kids are asleep. Nice bit of wind, doing about six knots on average. So we should uh, pick up the current through the Gibraltar Straits, just, just right, just on the slack tide. doing this morning you and not good what happened then last night it's been tough lots of counter thrown up but um it should, it should get easier but then you just not feel sick all the time yeah the hello how are you how are you busy matt our new crew member wasn't feeling too well lumpy all night and it still is. Ewan's woken up, he's feeling a little bit ropey as well. Feeling better now. I'm dead, okay? But we're about um, 30 miles from Gibraltar, so we can kind of see Morocco, we can see Gibraltar up ahead vaguely. But we find that uh, copper soups are a really good seasickness food. Nice soup, Owen. Hi. Hello. Can we get some uh, soup down? There! It's a tiny one. It's like a baby one. They're all tiny. They're not common dogs. So we're heading just into the Straits of Gibraltar now and um, the good wind that we had last night has been a bit of a blessing and a curse because we've got here about two or three hours ahead of high tide which means we've got wind against tide and we've got a very confused sea and we're doing roughly half uh, speed across ground as we have uh, speed through the water um, and the boats are getting thrown around quite a lot so we've had to put the engine on and we've got the main sail up just as a bit of stability um, but we've got to be battling on like this for the next two hours I think until the tide uh, at least goes slack Gibraltar itself is a really busy place and uh, I think one of the major marinas was having some work done at the time. So what most people do is park on the Spanish side of the border in a place called La Linea. Mom, what are we doing? We're going to into our berth where we will be for a few days waiting for a good wind to go down to the Canaries. Oh, and we passed Sir uh, Alan Sugar's yacht Lady A yeah, on the way in. We are off today to explore Gibraltar. Here we come. There's the rock. So Gibraltar is actually a British colony on the southernmost tip of Spain. So we're really looking forward to filling the bilges with some British food and uh, getting some tax-free fuel and exploring this unique and iconic rock that separates the Mediterranean from the Atlantic. When I was Ewan's age, uh, I used to live in Gibraltar. Uh, my dad was connected with the uh, forces here. And I used to live around here in Europa Pass 
and it was a military garrison then and there was uh, no civilians allowed. But it's changed a lot, there's been a huge amount of development since the 1980s. But we're going to go and see as much of it as we can today, maybe go and see the places where I used to play when I was Ewan's age. We're going to walk across the runaway, which yesterday I think I saw like a fighter jet go across. It's said that Gibraltar is even more British than Britain. It's got tea shops, fish and chip shops and pubs. So our immediate priority was to set ourselves up for the day with a good English breakfast. So this is the governor's residence since 1720s or 1730s. And uh, this is where the, uh, the boss man lives. And in no particular order, this is our top tourist attractions for families to visit in Gibraltar. This is Trafalgar Cemetery. There are some seamen that died from their wounds at the Battle of Trafalgar. And also many of these tombs here are victims of the three terrible yellow fever epidemics. You can get a day ticket which covers just about all attractions on the rock including the cable car trip to the top. So we're going to go on a cable car and uh, it's the same cable car that my dad went on when he was little and yeah it'll be really fun and when we get to the top we'll go to the nature reserve and see all the barroom macaques. We're going in the cable car. I'm going to see my cousins. We just got off the cable car and now we are um, heading towards the Skywalk and we are pretty much the only <laughs> tourist the here. So that's Gibraltar Nature Reserve. So that's where the monkeys are. Okay, so these are the monkeys and we're all feeling a little bit kind of nervous maybe. There's something behind me apparently. I'm being followed. This is like us when we all had um, knits. Nowadays, wild Barbary macaques are only found in the more mountainous areas of Morocco and Algeria, and of, and of course Gibraltar. It's classified as vulnerable by the World Conservation Union. Action is required to ensure the survival of this unique animal and it, in its natural habitats. A lot of mythology surrounding them. It's said that if the Barbary macaques ever leave the Rock of Gibraltar, then the British would lose their rule. Winston Churchill, it's said, when the population was dwindling during the Second World War, they had some importers, especially from Africa, to keep the population numbers up. It's very political, the Spanish want Gibraltar back for themselves, but the Gibraltar is very proud to be a self-governing uh, British sort of uh, enclave. We can see both of the Pillars of Hercules, as they're called now. So the, the Rock of Gibraltar is like the northern pillar, just over 400 metres high. Jebel Musa on the Moroccan side is um, over 800 metres, is the southern pillar. The other thing to be aware of is the sea in the Mediterranean is always a bit shallower than the Atlantic because it evaporates quicker. So you've always got this constant flow of current coming in, which makes it a bit hazardous sometimes trying to get out of the Straits of Gibraltar. Dad? Yeah. One to 50, how did you like the monkeys? The monkeys? I would say 40 because they were very lazy. One to 50, how did you like the monkeys? 40. 49.9. Probably like 49. I would say 45, they're very cute. So yeah, this is a bit freaky because we're kind of like on this glass and um, it's glass underneath as well. It was opened by Mark Hamill who also played Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars movies. You and now coming down the stage like Frank Sinatra's little offspring. It is long believed to be bottomless and it gave birth to a story that the Rock of Gibraltar was linked to the continent of Africa by an underwater passage. 
15 miles long under the Strait of Gibraltar. So here you can even see a cross section through a stalagmite, which shows its structure. Oh my God, look how high up that goes. It's like Lord of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's the crossing there and it's basically a zebra crossing so when the planes land they shut the runway so people will walk across and vice versa. There's our private jet. So this is the Great Siege Tunnels of Gibraltar. It's said that there's more miles of tunnels in the rock itself than there are roads on the island and that's due to centuries of conflicts and sieges. here just shows what it was like during the siege in Gibraltar. It shows what the standards of living were like and how people got punished. So yeah, take a look inside, it's pretty grim. Which you can find for long periods in unsanitary conditions. It is hardly surprising that smallpox, yellow fever, influenza, dysentery and scurvy thrived. By the end of the first year of the Great Siege, smallpox alone had killed over 500. It was interesting to see how the community on Gibraltar actually survived previous pandemics which were far worse and far deadlier than the one that we're currently going through. In this wall there is graffiti from 1726. These two are actually square riggers that one of the soldiers drew. It's just amazing how all of this was graffiti from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So these are the famous Mediterranean steps and these go all the way down the face of, uh, of Gibraltar Rock and uh, it's quite a walk. I'm glad we decided to go down and not up. I watched too many episodes of Lord of the Rings to go in there. Run you fools! Um, James Bond? Star Wars? Harry Potter! <laughs> Well, when we were walking, there were some like stray apes, like away from the sanctuary, and one of them just started like following us. It went up and just started going like that to my bag, trying to see if there was any food inside it. Did <laughs> you steal anything, Derry? Mm, no, but um, I kept my water here. Yeah. To mum, love always. I'm quite interested uh, on an amateur level on human evolution and the birth of civilizations. So, having visited the east side of the Mediterranean or the east side of Europe and visited Gebleke Tepe on the Syrian and Turkish border, I was really keen to visit the last known outpost of Neanderthal man, which is on the far southwestern tip of Europe. So this is uh, Gorham Caves in Gibraltar um, and it's one of the most important archaeological sites for Neanderthal finds in the world actually. Um, it's only a recent discovery and it was uh, the last sort of outpost of Neanderthals in Europe before they died out which goes back about 32,000 years. Um, unfortunately we didn't know but there is a year's waiting list to get into the caves. Uh, yeah, one year. So uh, we're not going to be hanging around for that long but uh, this would have been one of our top visits really in Gibraltar but uh, unfortunately we can't go so uh, we're going to move on. Here we have a direct descendant of Neanderthal man. 
Yeah, so we're going to do the walk back now. It's a bit more tricky when you're on foot and there's no buses that go around here, but we like walking. But um, yeah, as, as the woman said, it's just busy. It's way too busy. It's a wee year's waiting list. This is how busy it is. I used to actually live in Gibraltar when I was younger. Uh, my parents were stationed there when it was a military garrison. Uh, so it was really good to take the kids to show them the places I used to kind of go to school and used to live and play. It even had one of the original rope swings that I used to play on. Okay, this is my choice to go to the botanical gardens because it looks pretty cool and there isn't really a lot of greenery around Gibraltar but and I think if you want somewhere nice and calm then and uh, the botanical part. gardens is good. I think what's nice about Gibraltar, one of the things I particularly like is how proud it is of its heritage. In these days of cancel culture and people kind of tearing down history, it's nice to see people celebrating their survival really, you know, because uh, empire building wasn't all about going out there and uh, vanquishing foreign lands, it was also a lot about defence and, and self-sufficiency as well, and uh, I particularly like that. This arch is real bone from an unknown species of whale. Um, it's the jaw bone. In the early 20th century, um, lots of whalers were based in the, um, the Straits of Gibraltar. Maybe this arch represents all the whalers in Gibraltar or something. So we found this really nice kids park in the middle of the botanical gardens. So I, I would say botanical gardens is well worth the visit, you know, if you've got kids, definitely. <laughs> I'm <pulling> my pants. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been to the Lord Nelson pub which is in a really nice square here and we've had some really nice fish and chips and mushy peas and some puddings. Our waitress was fantastic, she's been really good and um, looked after us. Now we're going back to Spain over the border to La Linea back to our boat. My legs are dead. So thanks for watching, stay tuned when we head out into the Atlantic in the next one. I'm sorry that our vlogs are a bit haphazard at the moment. The uploads are not as regular as we'd like them to be and that's because we're kind of getting intermittent data when we're out at sea and some of the islands we visit. Uh, but stick with us, uh, it's going to be a bit kind of up and down the next few months um, but we will be recording every week um, and we'll catch up with them very soon. Who's up to go for the last stretch to the top of the rock? Not me. Yay! Oh, that's uh, Mongolia. No, oh, no, no, Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. Mexico. Geography 101. What is it? What's that country? Mex Mexico. Mexico. Right, no. that's it. This <laughs> vlog is officially over. You and me, we're family. No matter how far away we so thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification button. Thanks in particular to our patrons who we are always eternally grateful for. And if you'd like to become a patron, just follow the link in the description below. So we've got cheese. You have to eat the cheese.